Hey everybody, and welcome to the Week 5 After Hours Gaming League matchup between Faxet and Epic YOLO. Uh, if you're not familiar, the After Hours Gaming League is like your company's softball league with other companies, except instead of playing boring softball, we play League of Legends and StarCraft 2. Uh, joining me as always is Chris Max Sparrow Johnson. Max, what Yo. is your favorite item in League of Legends? Favorite item? Mm. Yes. That is a good question. Uh... You know, lately, I'm going to go with Iceborne Gauntlet. That is fun. Thing. You've been playing a lot of Ezreal, though, right? Yes, and it's yeah. worth on my Ezreal. That's fun. And I am Adam the Eclectic Gamer Pitzer, uh, ready to bring you this week's matchup. So this week's matchup, as we said, has Faxet on the blue side and Epic YOLO on the purple side. It's purple, right? Yeah. Red, purple, purple. Purple. <laughs> yeah, purple. All right, so before we start the actual game, let's go ahead and go over the picks and bans. On the fact set side, they ban Karthus, Lulu, and Morgana. Now, I know the Karthus, I, we took a look at some of the history, and it looks like I think it was one-man army who would, had been playing him a lot recently, and he had played him in the last couple of um, After Hours Gaming League matchups. So I think they wanted to avoid that uh, that global ultimate and you know remove some of that comfort pick there. Uh, Lulu and Morgana are very strong meta picks right now. Morgana sort of as a counter to a lot of the other strong supports, as well as taking advantage of that Spell Thief's Edge, and Lulu is a crazy mid laner now. She's moved over to the mid lane. Yeah, she's still a strong support, too. Um, yeah, uh, Epic YOLO, they banned uh, Fiddlesticks, Draven, and Yasuo. Fiddlesticks is a target ban against their Jungler Eternal King. Played Absolutely. a ton of games with Fiddlesticks last season. Draven is target ban against Astrum Cutie, who actually is not playing AD carry, but you know maybe he would if he could get Draven. Uh, and uh, Faxet has been practicing Yasuo lately, so that is another target ban against Faxet specifically. Yep. So I'm going into the picks. Uh, the first pick for Faxet was Pantheon. I believe this is one they've been practicing a little bit, and he's just a very strong early ganker, very strong meta champion. When they when they made his W work on minions, it just completely transformed him into someone who could work in the jungle. It was, uh, it's kind of awesome. I love Pantheon, so I'm glad to see him uh, yeah. back into style. So, the epic YOLO picks, we have Wukong and Thresh. Wukong's just another strong jungle right now, and Thresh has just been a, support, a strong pick for a while, so standard picks there. Absolutely. Um, so after that, uh, Faxet picked up Lucian and Annie. Um, again, strong meta champions. Um, high damage lane, actually, if they can get in there. Annie's, Annie's actually got a longer range than Lucian, but um, if they can if they can lay all the, all their damage out at once, it's a very very strong. Uh, it's a very very strong damage lane there. Yep. Uh, Epic Yellow then went on to pick Malzahar and Caitlyn. Malzahar is an unusual pick uh, because um, One Man Army has played 90 games with Malzahar last season, so it's, it's a comfort pick for him. And Caitlyn is just a strong pick right now. Yeah, very very safe um, and long range and uh, very high damage output. So she is also very good. Uh, so that being said, um, then after that, uh, Faxet picked up with their final two. They picked up Renekton and LeBlanc. And with um, Epic Yellow leaving, they basically left their counter pick as their last pick to the top lane. Renekton's a very strong pick um, if you know you're going to get countered because he's a big lane bully and he works pretty well about just against just about everyone. Yep. And then the uh, last pick for Epic Yellow was Shivana. It's just a strong top laner right now. So, very much so. Um, I think we, we talked about this a little bit. Generally, the uh, the way that lane works out is um, Renekton wins early, Shivana wins late. So, um, if if Faxet can push that lane, it should work out pretty well for them. And that was that was one of Zealanth's Zealanth's says the player Zealanth. <laughs> had one of his stronger games on Renekton, so um, I, I'm glad to see him back on that. I think I think having a, a strong laning presence in the beginning will help him um, work on his game. Cool. So um, these are these are pretty these are pretty metatastic comps we've seen here. Other than that, Malzahar, everyone's 
playing pretty very, much the top champs. Very standard champs right now, so... Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. What's strong is good, right? That's right. So, um, that being said, uh, let me switch over to the game camera, and let's get started. So you didn't tell me uh, what your favorite item is. Oh, you didn't ask me. Um... <laughs> Well, I am like my my uh, my handle is eclectic gamer, right? So I might have to go with the uh, the Trinity Force just because it has a little bit of everything. Ah, there you go. Very eclectic. It's fun. And that's funny. That's like one of my least favorite items. Like I could build it on Ezreal, but I never do. <laughs> yeah, it's only good on certain champions, but I do love them. I don't know. Maybe I'll have another one next week, so you can ask me then. Nice. Uh, we look at the item starts here. Uh, looks like we have two Doran shields, one on Thresh and one on Renekton. And that was an item that got nerfed uh, in this latest patch, 4.3. They reduced the amount of health you get and the amount of health regeneration, so it's, it's seen a little less use. Uh, what do you think about it on Thresh, Max? Doran shield? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's good because uh, he's leaning against Annie, so he's going to be able to deal with that poke a little bit better, and, you know, it's Hargan's Embrace, and uh, Spell Thief's Edge don't work as well on him, you know. He could get Coin, um, which would probably be a good pick, uh, especially for their comp that's kind of a dive. Maybe he'll get it later, but to survive in lane, Doran's Shield is, is really good against Annie. Yeah, Still. she's got she's got a super long range. It's actually longer than many AD carries, including Lucian. Um, so she can throw down those auto attacks, and it'll still reduce uh, some of the damage from it. Uh, Shivana actually went with uh, cloth armor and potions up top, um, which gives you a little. I think still gives you a little less than the shield early game, but you can build it into something later, so it's not as wasted. Um, yeah. And I noticed that no one went with the spell thief's edge. I love the spell thief's edge in this patch. It's it's so much fun. Um, yeah, it looks like Annie's going for like a much more aggressive start with that Dorian's ring. Yeah, if she wants to be spamming the abilities, that'll help her with the mana. Um, but yeah, both both sides of um, shoot the gold generation items. So you know, it's, how that works it's actually out. fairly interesting. It looks like LeBlanc actually went pretty far into the support tree. I, I didn't know that was, you know, a, a standard LeBlanc build because she's, she's got a biscuitier. Yeah, she's got the biscuit. Well, I guess she decided to. Uh, I, I I can't see it right now, but I assume she went with. Uh, she maxed out the AP in the attack tree and went uh, twenty one zero nine. I would assume so. You you can yeah you can get the biscuit with only nine in support tree I think right. Yeah I think so. A lot of trading going on up top. Um, you know that's what bruisers do I guess. And Annie's getting some good auto attacks off with that really long range. Yeah they're getting some good poke and bot lane attacks. That's got a bit of an advantage right now. Ooh and a good burst onto Malzahar as well. So nice. Oh and now we have a hook on Astron Cutie and the flay and. Ooh, the ignite and the last hit by Thresh, and he gets the kill. Yeah, she basically got everything thrown at her. That's pretty rough. Yep, they 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 got the hook and then they just threw everything at her and took her down. Yeah, that's that's the biggest disadvantage of Annie. She's she's really strong. Like she's got all the stuns and such. Like even if she didn't have gold generation, with all those stuns, she's gonna do really well. Um, but then with the damage, she can do crazy go crazy as well. Oh, Zealand's taking a lot of damage up top. Yeah, he's but, getting, he's getting uh, bullied pretty hard here by Shivana. Yeah. And his biggest problem, though, is um, she, she just can't take that harass. And against the Caitlyn, she's taking a lot of it. Yeah. That's going to be a tough lane for them. That They're really pushing them against the tower. It's going to make it hard for their Zazzy Mash to uh, see us there on Lucian as well. Yeah, he has, he's, a, he's an interesting one. Because uh, he doesn't have... I guess he doesn't start off with the highest base damage, but his passive... Uh, he really com he he really shines when Another he can. Another the Zazzy mash. Ooh, oh, first. Yeah, I got some good harass down, and uh, it's gonna give him a little some issues here under the tower. Um, but he really concentrates on threading his spells and his auto attacks to get those bonuses from his passive, which is why the Trinity Force is really good on him. Hey, oh, bring it back. Oh, <laughs> it's good burst on the Mazahar one man army in the in the mid there. Um, but he he is good. he is good with the Trinity Force. Um, because his passive makes you want to spell attack, spell attack, and mm -hmm. you get the same bonuses from doing that with the Trinity Force, so it kind of all works to get together. Yeah, that, that sheen is good. Oof. Whoa. Almost oh, that's from Cutie went low, and um, that burst, hook was yeah. close. So, uh, looks like uh, the Eternal King on Pantheon is heading up into the bush there, but I believe that is warded by Shivana, so... 
Uh, I think the word expired. It looks like she, she doesn't know, but she's not too worried because her mechanic's pretty low here, and he's going for the engage, and, and Pantheon flashed in, and she kind of flashed out after getting that kill on her mechanic, so... Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I, I think he was trying to... Zealand was trying to bait up there a little bit, but I think he was he was a little low for it to be effective, or... Uh. Yeah, for sure. It was, it was a little too risky, and Pantheon wasn't quite close enough. Uh, maybe there was a little miscommunication there, or... Um, we're not, we should have waited for the engage from Pantheon. Uh, so that's that's rough. But uh, another another lead here for uh, Epic Yolo. They're up a, a thousand gold now. Not insurmountable. It's still early in the game. Yeah. The uh, I will say that Renekton is uh, he's a little swingy sometimes with his damage because if if you can get that Q off around a lot of minions, he actually his health swings back up really quickly. Um, and so that's an interesting kind of one to play in lane. Yeah. So I will note that here that uh, so Shivana's come back from her first buy with a Vamp Scepter. So that's probably going for going into the uh, Blade of the Rune King, I would imagine, to get a little more damage and a little more uh, harass out there. Maybe some give her give her some dueling potential. Um, looks yeah, like she, she's going to keep bowling him up there. And Malzahar uh, came back with a pair of crystals, and so that's the only thing I can think of that makes sense for that is the Rod of the Ages. What's yeah, the, that's got to be what he's going for. A pretty unusual pick right now, but uh, I don't play Malzahar too much. He used to be one of my favorites like when I first started playing, but you know I'm not sure what items are good on him. So I guess this that, guy knows best, right? One-man army. He's played him quite a bit. He's played him quite a bit. That does That does let you know, though, that they're not probably going for pushing down all the towers immediately, because that Rod of the Ages, after you build the whole thing, takes another 10 minutes to get to its full sort of power and potential, and so they're not looking to, to steamroll this game right away, necessarily. That's true, that's a good point. So we look at some of the CS numbers, the bottom lane is up by about 15 in favor of Epic YOLO, about 10 in the favor of Faxet in the mid lane, and pretty close, 5 up uh, by Zealand, even after he died in lane. That's <coughs> actually, you know, not a bad way to be. Yeah, it's not too bad. He's, he's still holding his own up there. We got the ult from Shivana. Oop, and we got engaged mid lane. Malzahar ulted on block. And Wukong got counter engaged on by Pantheon on the block, and he got taken down. Ooh, the Pantheon on the block First dealt a lot of damage. Yeah, they did. That's, that's a very bursty pair right there, and Wukong just got caught out. So Shivana actually chose to engage with her ultimate, which is interesting because um, a lot of a lot of people will save that to escape. But I guess she thought she could um, burn down Renekton a little closer, sooner there. Ooh, quicker Oats is just barely escapes there from Malzahar's pet. Yeah, then the 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 pet the uh, damage over time on that E from Malzahar is really strong. It's it's it surprises people. Cotter with it and uh, the malefic vision, that's what it's called. Uh, so it looks like the bot lane is pushing down pretty hard. So you'll notice that uh, Dr. Freebird was able to come back with a BF sword to the Vamp Scepter of Zazimash. So it's that that uh, that kill and that extra CS is translating directly into items. And that's actually going to be a pretty significant difference here. And Annie did come back with the Spell Thief's Edge. Which is very exciting because I love that item. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Thresh actually went right for the Sight Stone. So I think it was Krepo who I was watching who was talking about it. It's like, yeah, you can go right for the Sight Stone because it allows you to put those wards out, and that's really like gold generation in and of itself instead of, you know, instead yeah. of spending money on wards, you're, you can use your Sight Stone. And if it helps you get kills, then it's even better. Penny saved is a penny earned. <laughs> that, that is correct. <laughs> and so it is a gold generation item through gold savings. Yes. Unless you just don't buy wards, well then, you know, it's not useful, is it? <laughs> That's true. That's been a weird effect of Season 4, I gotta say, is instead of, like, adapting and finding ways to, like, ward up more, people are like, yeah, we're not gonna ward, the jungler's gonna farm longer anyway. Yeah, it's actually kind of funny. I thought, you know, more people would ward and more mid laners would ward, and you kind of see that in the pro scene, but in solo queue, I mean, people just ward less. <laughs> yeah. Kind of funny. Well, I will note that both Pantheon... Uh, so the Eternal King and the Jungle for Fact Set and, and Quake Roads bought their own wards. Um, and you see a couple purple wards, so it looks like... Um, Ooh, the flay. Ooh, and a flash up by Astro Cutie, and Pantheon's Ooh. ulting in from the back, and Zazimash had to flash away. Pantheon's going for the kill there. Ooh, 
Caitlyn just got a double kill. She finished off Lucian and then ulted Annie. Can she get out from Pantheon? She can. Wukong's coming from the back to back him up. Oh, is Pantheon going uh, back in? He is. And yeah. Wukong got the ult on him, and he is taking him down. Oof. The flash out by Eternal King. It's yep. gotten out. Oh, he and it out. And Wukong double kills. Or, you know, not double kill, but they kill each other in the mid lane there. Um, wow, that's hard. Home place. Yeah, I will say that it looked like in that bottom lane, all the damage was going on to Thresh, who actually does have some extra hit points from that Sight Stone, um, as opposed to on the facts that side, all the damage was going on to Lucian. And so when those two first went down, you were left with a Caitlyn with a BF sword who was able to deal out a lot of damage there. I, I I didn't see all of it, but it would be interesting to see if they had had switched some of that damage over to Caitlyn if they would have been able to get out a little bit, a little more. Uh, yeah, you know, they had to shoot the closest target, I think, was the problem. You know, Caitlyn's got such range that she was able to just uh, poke from the back, and the Pantheon wasn't able to quite get in there in time to, to really be in the fight. He, he was trying to clean up afterwards, and it just wasn't quite enough, you know. Yeah. So we do have a dragon going down for Epic Yolo as well, and the aftermath of that fight, putting them up by about 3,000 gold at this point. So they are pulling ahead a little bit, but no towers have gone down. Yeah, no towers yet. It's still, you know, Fax that can still come back from this. Not a huge lead by Epic Yolo, but yeah, it's starting to swing in their favor. Uh, Caitlyn did come back with that BF sword. Shivana is now back with her cutlass. And Mazelhart came back with a, uh, a Negatron cloak. That's not part of a Rod of Ages, is it? No, I don't think I so. I don't think so. Um, I, I mean, he's getting the catalyst, and maybe he's, you know, that that will be a good item for him for now, is that will give him those stats as he levels up, or gives him, like, health back, right? And, um, yep. and, uh, the Negatron Cloak, you know, maybe he's just taking a little too much harass from the block, and he, he wants to be able to mitigate that somewhat. That makes sense. She is, she is very bursty. Now, um, Faxa actually has done a little bit of aggressive warding up in the topside jungle there, but Epic Yellow saw it go down, and they were pinging it out, so... Wukong will know that that's there. Yeah, he's going to go under the games. tower here. He pops his ult. Shivana pops her oh. ult, and she has to back. Ooh, but he burns from the ignite, and the next one gets taken down. Ooh, and they're going to Caitlyn here to ult on uh, Caitlyn. Oh, and uh, Zazen uh, just barely gets her, and Pantheon's ulting in as well. So four men for Faxa in the bot lane. They get Thresh as well with the Pantheon and Blank coming in to help clean up. It's unfortunate that the the dragon is already gone. Had it still been there, I think they would have been able to take that no problem. But it's okay, um, they get the bot turret. This is, oh, but because LeBlanc left mid lane, oh no, response, they get top a turret. Yep, yeah. uh, with Renekton going down the from the ignite there, Shivano was able to come back in and pick it up. But I think yep, that's was able to pick up that bottom turret. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if that can give them uh, a little more control over Dragon in the next Wukong Dragon fight. The block here. And ooh, he ulted the clone. Malzahar got the ult off on the Blank's clone, so he didn't quite get her, and she escaped. Interesting. All right, so a lot of action going on in this game. Looks um, like we got a Siege coming in mid lane, and Epic Yolo is getting the mid turret as well. Yeah, the... Even if Faxa could have gotten there, I don't think they would have wanted to be. <laughs> uh, so that puts it up two towers to one for Epic Yolo. Uh, and let's, let's do a quick item recap here. Shivana completes that Blade of the Rune King, so she's actually going to be doing quite a bit of damage there. Especially in that duel if they stick up top. Um, what is what is Renekton going for with that Kindle Gem? Easy. Uh, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> I well, we will see. I guess I, I, I can't think off the top of my head. You know, I think maybe he's gonna build a sunfire cave next, but I don't know what he built the Kindle gem for at first. That's interesting. Now, uh, Epic Yellow's jungler um, Zigax does have his completed jungle item, so he's actually gonna be generating gold a little faster. Pantheon actually went for the um, the tier two boots before that, the Ninja Tabby. Um, um, but it looks like he'll be going back and completeting Oops. his Elder Lizard as got well. Got a stun on uh, Malzahar here from Annie. Popping her ult in the blocks. Clone got popped and she's taking damage from Malzahar's dot. Uh, but the blank gets the kill. Alright, then Ignite takes it down again. But it looked like uh, Thresh took down that final turret in the, in the bottom lane. So all the outer turrets are down now for fact set. Uh, Rod of Ages is complete on Malzahar. Um, yep, uh, I think that's all the... Uh, the exciting news from the land of the 
Yeah, Gold. Caitlyn's got her Bloodthirster and Lucian has still not quite got it, so that's not a big difference. She's gonna ult it in here and... Kinda goes uh, in two on one. Thrush is tracing down got back up. in kinda of bad spot, she's getting taken down. Uh, another kill for uh, Epic YOLO. Renekton just barely gets out, he has to burn his flash, and it looks like they're gonna be in a good position. Epic YOLO's gonna be in a good position to seize this top turret now. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of craziness going on once those towers started falling, people um, roaming all over the place. And it looks like Epic Yellow is just one step ahead. Lucian using his ultimate there to try to clear out the tower. Uh, it's actually really oh, good at that. Pantheon all coming in. Renekton doesn't have his ult, so he gets bursted on real fast. Pantheon comes in to try to get the kill on Caitlyn, but he also gets bursted down. Four man Renekton ult, but he gets or uh, Pantheon ult, but he got burst down. Yeah. Wu Wukong tried to go in a little too deep on the block, the block took it down. And oop, here's a pull on the Lucian from Thrush, and the block comes in and bursts down Thrush. And it looks like they're getting another kill. Ooh, just barely in the spot. And then the Nailzahar ult comes down on the Lucian and takes him down. The block managed to survive that Caitlyn ult just barely. And here's the, the damage down from Nailzahar taking out Annie. Annie yeah, is doing it. So. With all the kills there, that kind of circled back around. It looked like it was a four for three in favor of in favor of Epic Yolo. Yeah, um, and they also got the, tower. got the tower. Yeah, so there's another small lead there for Epic Yolo. But now about five thousand gold up. So yep. Um, now that's starting to get pretty big at sixteen minutes, and they've got four turrets down. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, how much pressure they can produce here. Yeah, the, uh, their gold lead is an insurmountable, but the, the tower lead is a really big difference. They're able to really get better position against Faxet. Now, Faxet does have a couple wards in their inventory as well as that Ruby Sightstone on Annie, so they will be able to... Um, they will be able to ward up their own jungle and maybe try to prevent some of those rotations um, from catching anyone out. So hopefully they can put all that down. The dragon is now live. Uh, I think both teams have a timer on it. Faxess is not as specific, but they I think they knew it was being taken. So we might see a big fight here. And I think Faxet might have a chance to come back a little bit. Between the Renekton ult, the Pantheon ult, and Annie's Tibbers, Ooh, they, they do quite they a bit of damage. Them. Oh, and they just missed the hook. But it looks like they're going to go for Dragon. It does Epic. look like it's enough to pressure Faxet back. Yeah, the, uh, Renekton's top lane, so Faxet can't uh, really engage into this. But it looks like Renekton's going to be able to get the... Um, top turret in response. Not bad. So, Caitlyn did go with uh, Last Whisper as her second item, which is sort of interesting because Last Whisper is only really effective if your other team has a bunch of armor, and the only one who has any armor really is Renekton. He doesn't have that much of it, so that's an interesting Ooh. second choice. Renekton did not quite the top turret, and Shivana ulted in here, and she got the Blade of the Rune King on him. Ooh, the slice and dice. Maybe gave him just enough distance. Oh, but Thrush and Wukong coming in here to get finish him off. Uh, I don't think Renekton's getting out of this one. Caitlyn helping out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Blade of the Ring King is really nice on... It's actually nice on both of them. But um, she's got that... Uh, I think I think it's her Q, um, Shivana, who gives her extra attacks. Like, you know, her attack, attacks twice. You got a Pantheon you know, coming down on the Nails of Heart here. And they're diving him real deep, and they got the stun on him coming down. All right, they managed to uh, combine that, you know, chain their CC there and take him down, but they might be losing an inhibitor turret here. Let's see if they can get back in time. Yeah, it was a bit risky by FX up because now they are really out of position to defend this inhibitor and the inhibitor turret. They are back but to defend the inhibitor, but they lost that turret, which is going to be a really big focal point coming up here. Yeah, it looks like Epic Yellow backs off before trying to initiate another fight on that uh Inhibitor, I wonder if they're going for Baron here, actually. It'll be a really early Baron, but no, they're just backing off. Yeah, I think they're just warding it out, backing up. Yeah, they're playing it slow and smart. They've got some good wards there on the top side of the jungle. Um, and it'll be interesting to see where they decide to be their next strike. But like I said, I like the um, I like the Blade of the Ring King on Shivana just because um, her Q gives her that extra attack. And she attacks twice, and Blade of the Room King um, does extra percentage damage on every attack. So, against uh, someone with a lot of a lot of hit points like that, Renekton will do really well. Uh, looks like she's going for a Randuin's Omen next, and that'll help them catch people out, especially when she does really great on her as well, because she can dive in and then hit someone with a Randuin's Omen to stop them from escaping. Yeah, absolutely. 
and Renekton's got his uh, Sunfire Cape already, so if he can start split pushing a little bit, he should be able to burn down those waves pretty quick, actually. Yeah, uh, you, you can try to split push, but you know, with Shivana on that, with that Blade of the Ruin King, and especially when she gets Rain or Zelman, Renekton's not going to get away, so it's going to be pretty risky. Ooh, Wukong's coming in for an ult on the block and Lucian. And he's pulling back a little bit there. They took down Annie, they got her with the hook, and they got the counter engage on the Wukong and took him down. Oof, but the damage is there against LeBlanc, and they took her down. And Ooh, Lucian it, went down too. Ooh, this Shivana is a coming in from Faxet. behind. And there goes Pantheon Zealand, this last man standing for Faxet, and he is. Probably not for long. Barely getting out. No, Shivana's going deep, taking him down. That was. They went two towers deep that time. Um, so the death timers still aren't that long, but they're definitely going to be able to take this tower, and it looks like a couple are rotating over to take the top inhibitor that they left exposed last time. Yep. Uh, Annie is back, but I don't... Oh, and with home guard, she's Home going by herself, long. which is a big mistake. They burst her down real quick. I think they wanted to see if they could um, catch out Shivana, who was very, very low oh, on health. Champion's coming in with his ult. But there's no support to back him up either, so he's got took down by Caitlyn Trap, a really well placed Caitlyn Trap right when he came in. LeBlanc's going for the kill on the Lucian here at the night, and they get Lucian, but you know, there was another two kills there from Anthony on Annie going back to Epic Yolo, so. Yeah. Well, Lucian got that. the kill on Thresh, so that's really important because they don't like each other. <laughs> I think the lead it, is getting pretty big here for Epic Yolo, 10k gold lead here. That's true. It's getting it's getting a little larger. As in the lore, Thresh has uh, Lucian's wife trapped in his lantern, her soul. Yeah. Which is why it's always funny when they're on the same team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, looking across, let's see how close to stacked up that uh, Route of the Ages is. Um, it's close there. It's um, a little over half the way done. Um, so Thresh has finished that Talisman of Ascension, which will allow Epic Yolo to chase those fights even more. Yeah. Shivana's got her Randuins now, too, so Engage is going to be really good. And there's no one from Faxit to defend the bottom lane turret, and Shivana is just going to go ahead and take it down. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, so... We do have the Deathfire Grasp on... Um, Ooh, hook on to LeBlanc here. Wukong comes in with the engage and the ult, and LeBlanc just evaporated. Zazzy mashes a little cut out here too, but he flashed away, and the Caitlyn ult does massive damage. Ooh, and he just barely dodges the Thresh hook. Yeah, I was going to say that with that Deathfire Grasp, one way for Faxet to possibly be able to get back in is to um, have LeBlanc burst someone out, but that doesn't work if she gets bursted out first. Yep, she got, she got caught out there, and there Shivana took that turret. And uh, Epic Yolo is here in a great position to take down the middle and hit their turret as well and keep pushing for the in hit. They're, they're pretty healthy and uh, they've got a strong advantage right now. Yeah, uh, I think Fax has in a little bit of trouble here, but they're still going for these Ooh. engages. LeBlanc's going in for Caitlyn and the barrier stopped her just barely and Shivana's bursting down LeBlanc. Oh, wow. She just barely got her. Shivana's not getting out of that one though. Looks like the Eternal King went down on Pantheon off screen there um, that's two for one Shivana did go down just not terrible for Faxit right now um, they, they are able to defend and Annie's got those home guard boots so she might be able to come back and get some stuns off but not before this turret goes down yeah I think Yolo is still still pretty strong here the low on health is a bit risky by them but they Faxit's got two members down and oop, they, they took down uh, Wukong it's definitely worth it for them to get these three inhibitors down now, though, and they've got Talisman of Ascension to get out of there, so they only lost one Wukong there trying to uh, get that last inhibitor. Yeah. Now they're in a really strong position to just come back in and, and go for the turrets, or they can take the Baron very easily now. Yeah, so now that all three of those inhibitors are down, we are going to start to see even more super minions coming out of the base of Epic Yolo, so it's going to be very hard to defend. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So there are two super minions coming uh, on each wave now. Um, so each of those lands is going to push themselves even harder. Um, so like the fact that in a lot of trouble here, um, it's almost like they're, they're just going to have to farm up as much as they can. But Annie's going over there with um, for the dragon. I don't think they can oh, pick it up. Caitlin's trying pushing her away from that. Oh, and they got the ult on the Pantheon, and he is dead. And that was her ult just did massive damage to him. 
I will note that uh, Astrum Cutie's uh, ward skin is the Draven head. <laughs> cool. <laughs> you saw him put his ward down. It's the it's the head of Draven. So you know we talked about how uh, the the Draven ban came because Astrum Cutie plays him so much, and he's gonna he's gonna represent even if Draven gets banned out. Yeah. So it looks like Abigail going for a three man Baron attempt here. Um, you know might as you know they, they got they grab the dragon. May as well grab the Baron for this last little push. Uh, those lanes are all going to be pushing so hard. Um, it's going to be hard for Fakta to get out and help because yeah. things might go down in the meantime. Yeah, there's one of those hidden inhibitors. About it. Yeah, one of those inhibitors has respawned, but I don't think it's dead for too long. And there goes the Baron. Yep, looks like Epic Yolo is getting ready here for the, their their siege. And they, they, you know, they are very careful here. They got everything ready here. Oh, and uh, the ult goes down. The anti ult goes down on the Mal's Sahara, but. No, she had to go down defensively. Uh, she basically had to go down defensively so she wouldn't uh, get taken down there. So, yep. luckily, oh, she can recharge her stuff. Because Andy got poked down too much, they weren't able to defend that inhibitor, and they're here holding out of their teeth at the Nexus turrets. Pantheon's ulting in for defense, and he's going in for Keelan, and he gets bursted down immediately. Renekton coming in too by himself, and also gets bursted down. The rest of the team is being pushed away from their turrets, and. There's not much they're doing able to do here. Oh, they burst down Caitlyn, got one kill, but the Nexus is or the Nexus is taking a lot of damage here. Oh. GG. And that looks like the end. A good win there for Epic Yolo. So I will note that uh, one interesting thing that the um, After Hours Gaming League has been doing is that it's basically using a, a Swiss system. I don't know if I, how familiar you are with that, Max. It's um, no. kind of what it's kind of what you use for chess. Um, to, um, so that basically as you play games, the teams that are winning or the players that are winning in chess, um, play against the, the teams that are also winning. So both of these teams are three and one. So these are the, the very top of the, the bracket here in, um, in the After Hours Gaming League, on um, their half of the division, and so basically, if you start winning three, the the Swiss system says, okay, after everyone you, you figure out how everyone's um, placed, and then take so with the top people, the undefeated people are placed against each other, and then the next two, and the next two, and the next two. So these are these are both three and one teams. Uh, Epic Yellow is very strong. I believe they've only lost to uh, the undefeated uh, one of the undefeated teams from Amazon. So. Um, we're, we're seeing a very high-level match here, but there were a lot of diamond players there on um, on the Epic Yellow team. Yeah, it was just a convincing win by them. Yeah, they managed to. Um, yeah, they basically kind of they 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 basic. I think I would say the mid lane actually um, did decently well for Faxet, but the other lanes started to lose either in kills or in CS, and um, Epic Yellow just learned you know knew how to capitalize on that and, and push them down. Absolutely. All right, excellent. So we should be back uh, next week with uh, the week six game. Um, any parting thoughts here, Max? Cool game. <laughs> it was a cool game. And next week will be even cooler, I'm sure. All right. So uh, for the After Hours Gaming League and everyone at FactSet, uh, I'm Adam the Eclectic Gamer Pitzer. And I'm Chris Maxbarrow-Johnson. And we'll see you next week.